Welcome back to Entertainment Tonight's Whatever Happened to Your Favorite Stars. For most of the 70s, Match Game was one of the most popular game shows on television. Mostly unscripted, you never knew what celebrity panelists like Charles Nelson Riley and Brett Summers might say. And now, we know why. You know about hangovers, do you? I've had some of the best hangovers in business. <laughs> it was a fun show to do. You'd do three shows and then you'd have dinner and drinks. <laughs> you can always tell, I can always tell when I watch you, I'll go, after dinner. That show is done after dinner. <laughs> the food was good. And you could have a drink when you wanted to. You know, after you to take four shows, the last show you had, you could order from the prop man. The mayhem on Match Game was partially fueled by alcohol, but also by the blend of zany celebrity personalities that sat on the panel. Charles said once about the show, he said, this is not a jam, this is a social engagement. Because, you know, a bunch of us would get together, do a couple shows, break for lunch, have a little vino. The show had originated in the early 60s with host Gene Rayburn, but was reborn in the 70s when it aired daily on CBS. The bitchy repartee between Riley and Summers kept audiences hooked. How are you feeling, Charles? Much better today. Thank Good. You. And no. you, my dear. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? If he doesn't feel well, why doesn't he go to a hospital and stop spreading his... You because remember maybe the nurse would look like you. <laughs> I think Charles and I had a, you know, a marvelous relationship. We, we had great fun doing it. I love Charles. Him lot, what I'd like to give Charles. I look at them because they're funny. For some strange reason, the match game was funny. Brett was the wife of actor Jack Klugman. The producers of Match Game originally wanted the odd couple star to be a part of the panel, but he had other commitments, and Mrs. Klugman stayed. Riley was a well-known Broadway actor and director, and the two of them became a real-life TV odd couple. Charles fell asleep one day. He literally we went to a commercial, and he came out, and he, went, and he was... I said, you were sleepy. He said, I was not. I said, you were. So we're screaming at each other on the air. Would you stay awake? <laughs> he yawned right in your face. There was practically no rehearsal for the show, and the director rarely cut tape when the stars would get raunchy. The lady bullfighter lost her cape, so she shook her blank at the bull. That's what I always shake at a bull, bosoms. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Charles. Charles. <laughs> oh, it's true the bull has to die, but so quickly. <laughs> One time the taping did have to stop. Well, the funniest thing that ever happened was when I was interviewing a young contestant, a beautiful young woman. Uh, we were on the air, the tape was rolling. And she had great teeth, a great smile, great uh, dimples in her cheeks. I looked at her and I said, you know, you have the most beautiful nipples I've ever seen. Well, in those days, in that climate, they had to edit that out of the tape. The stars all seemed to have a great time ribbing each other, but none of the regulars were friendly with panelist Richard Dawson. Something I hope to be when I grow up, a sex maniac. Well, Mr. Dawson never spoke to me. He was like that. He couldn't get, you know, close to him. He would not eat with us or go out with us or anything. Charles was the first one finished. Oh! That I can't believe. Oh! Oh! Charles oh! was the first wait, one finished. Oh! Wait. wait, every once in a while we see beautiful acting. Isn't she wonderful? What an artist. That was so real. Yeah. Riley became famous from Match Game, but he says that all of the goofiness on the show blacklisted him in other parts of show business. The worst thing that could happen to you is that you become a game show fixture. That's the end of your life. Riley's flamboyant ways on the show were also unusual for television in the 70s. He says he never hid the fact that he is gay. I never thought of coming out of a closet because I never was in a closet. I just was being who I was and, and, and what I thought I was. <laughs> We'd like the people in America to see some of Brent Summers' Pugman's collection of fine toys. Aren't they gorgeous? Eat your heart out, the board. <laughs> Gene Rayburn passed away in 1999. 
Brett Summers never divorced Jack Klugman, although they've been separated for decades. She lives in Connecticut and plans her own one-woman show. The reruns of Match Game are among the highest-rated shows on the Game Show Network and air each and every night. Brett is amazed how it's brought her a whole new generation of fans. I got a letter from a 12-year-old boy the other day saying he just found Match Game. In the years since Match Game went off the air, Riley has continued to act, direct theater, and is the star of his own autobiographical one-man show, The Life of Riley. But he says for some reason, a rumor once circulated that he was dead. When I play my play, they call the box office. And this is true. And they say, who's playing Riley in The Life of Riley? And they say, Charles Nelson Riley. And they go, he's dead! The tall one with the big glasses and the, and the, and the wig? He's dead! And the box office says, yes, he, he is dead, madam, you're right. But he still manages to come in every night anyway. Here's the answer to our Match Game trivia question. Which of TV's Golden Girls appeared regularly as a panelist throughout the 70s? That was Betty White, who played the game for seven seasons.